lord. Is this... Can this be... Am I? Could I be? Maybe. You never know. If it is... But the question remains... Why? Bless my soul. Harry Potter. What an honor. Well, yes, you're very perceptive. Most people don't realize that quite so quickly. Don't pester the boy, Tom. He's new to all this. But it is him? It's Harry Potter. My grandson was an auror. Died in 79. Thank you, Harry Potter. Thank heavens for you. McGonagall? Who was the pale man? The man in the bar with a twitching eye. That was Professor Quirrell. He'll be teaching Defense Against the Dark Arts this year at Hogwarts. I had the strangest feeling that I knew him, and that I shouldn't ought to shake his hand. Mr. Potter, how much have you been told about how your parents died? My parents are alive and well, and they always refuse to talk to me about how my genetic parents died. An admirable loyalty, though it hurts a little to hear you say it like that. Lily and James were friends of mine. Your genetic parents died very well indeed, protecting you. Protecting me? Something strange clutched at Harry's heart. Then her wand licked out and tapped three times on a brick wall, which hollowed into a huge archway, revealing a long row of shops with signs advertising cauldrons and dragon livers. Harry didn't blink. It wasn't like anyone was turning into a cat. And they walked forward, together, into the wizarding world. Harry's head kept rotating, rotating like it was trying to screw itself off his neck. It was like walking through the magical item section of an advanced Dungeons & Dragons rulebook. He didn't play the game, but he did enjoy reading the rulebooks. Then Harry spotted something that made him, entirely without thinking, veer off from McGonagall. He was brought back to reality only when McGonagall stepped right in front of him. Mr. Potter, I'm sorry. I forgot for a moment that I was with you instead of my family. When you walk past a bookstore you haven't visited before, you have to go in and look around. That's the family rule. Mr. Potter, our first step is to visit Gringotts, the bank of the Wizarding World. Your genetic family vault is there, with the inheritance your genetic parents left for you. And you'll need money for school supplies. And I suppose a certain amount of spending money for books could be excused as well. Though you might want to hold off for a time. Hogwarts has quite a large library on magical subjects. Don't get me wrong, it's a great distraction. Probably the best distraction anyone has ever tried on me. But don't think I've forgotten about our pending discussion. And she told him of he who must not be named, the Dark Lord, Voldemort. It should have been funny, but it wasn't. The name burned with a cold feeling, ruthlessness, diamond clarity. A chill swept over Harry even as he pronounced the word, and he resolved then and there to use safer terms like you know who. The Dark Lord had raged upon Wizarding Britain like a wilding wolf, tearing and rending at the fabric of their everyday lives. Other countries had wrung their hands but hesitated to intervene, for whichever was first among them to oppose the Dark Lord, their peace would be the next target of his terror. The bystander effect, thought Harry. The Death Eaters were not as terrible as the Dark Lord, but they were terrible, and they were many. And the Death Eaters wielded more than wands. There was wealth within those masked ranks, and political power. An old and respected journalist, Yermi Wibble, called for increased taxes in a draft. He shouted that it was absurd for the many to cower in fear of the few. His skin, only his skin, had been found nailed to the newsroom wall that next morning, next to the skins of his wife and two daughters. Whoever stood out the most became the next example until the names of James and Lily Potter rose to the top of that list. And those two might have died with their wands in their hands and not regretted their choices, for they were heroes, but for that they had an infant child, their son, Harry Potter. So what happened? The Dark Lord came to Godric's Hollow. You should have been hidden, but you were betrayed. The Dark Lord killed James, and he killed Lily, and he came in the end to you, to your crib. He cast the killing curse at you, and that was where it ended. The killing curse cannot be blocked, but you survived. You are the only person ever to survive. The killing curse reflected and rebounded and struck the Dark Lord. That was the end of the terror, and we were free. That, Harry Potter, is why people want to see the scar on your forehead, and why they want to shake your hand. The storm of weeping that had washed through Harry had used up all his tears. He could not cry again. He was done. And somewhere in the back of his mind was a small, small note of confusion. A sense of something wrong about that story, and it should have been a part of Harry's art to notice that tiny note, but he was distracted, for it is a sad rule that whenever you are most in need of your art as a rationalist, that is when you are most likely to forget it. Um, you can go ahead and call them my parents, if you want. You don't have to say genetic parents or anything. I guess there's no reason I can't have two mothers and two fathers. And they walked together in silence until they came before a great white building with vast bronze doors. Gringotts, said McGonagall.